Hello, I'm going to show you how to do an SR hammer installation with the MSRT applicator tool. Let's begin. First, we're going to measure the belt thickness after scive so we can select the right rivet size. Using our rivet selection gauge, we're going to measure on each belt end and the middle of the belt so we can specify which rivet size we should be using. Here, we fall in the size of a C rivet and a B rivet. Since we have some extra rubber to compress, I'm going to go ahead and choose the B rivet. Whenever you're using a power rivet driver, always use the smaller rivet. Sometimes if the belt is worn, we may need to use two or three different rivet sizes throughout the belt width. Next, we're going to load the fastener strip into the MSRT base. I'm going to remove the clamp bar. And I need to set up the MSRT for the correct fastener size. Here I'm going to be installing an R5 fastener. So I'm going to make sure the fastener locator and the pin locator are in the correct location. To do that, we're going to lift up and move it so it corresponds with the R5 fastener. All the rest have already been set. We're going to center the strip on the tool, making sure that the scallop edge on the bottom of the fastener locates with the scalloped edge on the tool. And then we're going to insert the gauge pin which locks the fastener into place. Next we're going to load the belt into the base and into the fastener. When we do that we want to make sure that the belt fully seats against the belt stops in the fastener. And before I lock it down completely, I want to make sure that the belt is centered side to side. And to do that, we can measure from the end of the fastener strip to the end of the belt. Another easy trick is if the belt width is shorter than the MSRT base, then we can measure how many open holes from each anvil there are. So here I have three and a half open holes. On this side I have three. So I can go ahead and adjust that over. There I have three and a quarter. And then I'll go ahead and lock down the clamp bar. When we tighten the clamp bar, we want to make sure we tighten it evenly so it provides even tension across the belt. The, the clamp bar has a camber in it, so it, it'll contact the middle of the belt first, and then as you tighten it, it'll even out the pressure across that belt. The next step is to preset the fastener plates against the belt. The fastener plates are made to accommodate a wide range of belt thickness, so we want to close it against the belt. When we do that, we want to make sure that we don't hit the loop area or the hinge area, and we want to close it by presetting the edge of that plate so it closes perpendicular to the bottom plate and gives a clear path for that rivet to travel through. Don't be afraid to hit that clamp bar because it's not going to do any damage and we want to make sure that we stay close to that clamp bar when we're setting the plates. Now we're going to load the guide blocks onto the MSRT base. When we install across a belt width, we want to make sure that we do each belt end first. We're going to lock the guide blocks in the place making sure we don't over tighten them because then it'll raise them and they won't be perpendicular with that belt. Here the end guide blocks are only covering three plates so we're going to go ahead and break off one, one plate for each strip. And 
I'm going to do the same on the other end. And then we're going to push the rivets down against the belt. And then we're going to spray some silicone spray. And this helps the five prong driver and the rivets glide easier during the installation. The first hit using the hammer and the five prong driver are the most important because we want to make sure that that first hit locates the rivet through the top fastener, the belt, the bottom fastener, and in through the MSRT base. We don't want to give it short, light taps. We want to give it strong hits. And on that third hit, you can hear it bottoming out, and we know that we're done with that initial set on that plate, and we can go ahead and move on to the next one. If you have problems getting that five-prong driver out of the guide block, you can go ahead and give it a little hit, and that'll help release that five-prong driver. And then we'll go to the opposite end. And then we're going to go ahead and move to the middle of the belt to do our next installation area. If we have a wider belt than what we see here, then we would do each end, we would do the middle, and then we would split the difference and then fill in the rest of the rivets. There's four plates remaining here. I'm going to drive just three of them with the five prong driver. And the reason why I just uh, did three plates and not four, I wanted to show you that if you don't have your five prong driver or your guide block, we can in still install using just the standard single rivet and a claw hammer. So now the initial set of the rivets is complete, but it still requires a final set to fully seat the rivet heads and to fully curl it underneath the bottom. When we do the final set, we still want to make sure that the clamp bar stays on because that's going to hold the belt and fasteners down against the anvils of the MSRT tool. Using a four pound hammer, we want to make sure that we hit the rivets down into the cups of the plate and then we're going to go and hit the scalloped edge to provide pucker for good uh, leading edge of the fasteners, making sure we don't hit the loop or the hinge area. And then I'll go and hit that scalloped edge. And now the final set is complete. Now we can remove the belt end from the tool. We're going to loosen up the clamp bar and take it off. And then we're going to remove the gauge pin. Sometimes the belt end is tight coming out of the MSRT. You can take your hammer and hit the belt edge right in front of the MSRT and that'll help lift it up out. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to remove the excess nails. 
and then we're going to remove the excess nails from the MSRT base so it's all set up for the next person to use. We've gone ahead and repeated the same steps for the second belt end. Now we could join the two belt ends together, always notching the trailing edge of the belt. We're going to join the loops together and insert the hinge pin. And then we'll use the corresponding size for the hinge pin retaining collars to lock in each end of the hinge pin. And that's how we do an SR installation with a hammer and the MSRT base.